Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel. I have another empties video every single time I do this. I am shocked by the amount of empties that I always accumulate, mostly because I watch other YouTubers who so much like less frequently, more infrequently, what's the right way to say that, do these videos. And I even know, I think it's like Coffee Break with Danny or a couple other people like do it once a year. And I'm like, how? I'm like, overflowing after like a month or two so maybe they're not showing everything I don't know but I'm just gonna start talking every month I start out with candles because or every time I do one of these I start out with candles because I go through a lot of candles they take up a lot of space in my empties bag they're all from Bath and Body Works this time like pretty much usual first one is gooey marshmallow this was from like the holiday time toasted no torched marshmallow brown sugar and caramel drizzle super yummy sweet cozy like I would totally repurchase that if it came back next year this one has like a really pretty packaging has this marbly lid that could totally be used as a coaster so I actually might hold on to that see if I can repurpose it this is called vanilla birch this is a scent that they do have like I want to say year-round or like they're more likely to have it year-round white birch bark Madagascar vanilla and warm sandalwood warm cozy vanilla good for year round recommend here's another Christmassy one this one is peppermint marshmallow peppermint and spearmint essential oil and powdered sugar and marshmallow you can see that I have a thing for marshmallow I also really like the mint with the vanilla in there it's just like a sweet did it even say vanilla or did I just make that up I don't know but it kind of smells like it like a sweet minty deliciousness recommend would repurchase and then this one is called magic in the air which if you are at all familiar with bath and body works see it has like a fun lid this is one of their actually body care products like the yeah and they made it into a candle so this is like kind of a special one with that fancy lid it was like a little bit more expensive this is almond flour white iris and whipped vanilla bourbon it's really good it's a really kind of interesting smell I certainly wouldn't not certainly I don't really like it enough for that to be like a bot like I don't really want a body spray of that I'm also just not really a body spray girl I'm just like a um I would maybe use it in like a shower gel maybe a lotion I don't know if I really want it to stay on my body but it was pretty nice um I used it during the month of January I thought it was like a nice new year's still cold outside but yeah anyway another thing I have in most every empties is Bath and Body Works hand soap so the gentle foaming hand soap that is the packaging that I like the best the formula this one is called tis the season uh, it's one of my absolute favorite Christmas smells they bring it out every year I feel like this was the first year they had it in hand soap I could be wrong but it's always been a home fragrance scent I know this was the first year they brought it out in body care so they had like shower gel and like bubble bath which was really exciting but it's red apple ground cinnamon and clove Mm, it just makes me transport it to Christmas. Okay, and then these were some fun ones. This was called Cocktails and Confetti. This was actually a Shimmer Lux hand soap, so it was like shimmery in the bottle, which made it so pretty in there. Like it looked so cool. It was like a shimmery blue liquid. But I will say, it didn't foam quite as well, and it didn't leave shimmer on your hands, which is fine. Honestly, a lot of people probably wouldn't want that. I wouldn't mind a shimmery hand. Why not? It didn't leave that. I still really liked it but it did make it a little like harder to get out a little bit less um yeah a little bit less smooth upon exiting the bottle that had fizzy soda sugar crystals and fluffy marshmallow did I even say the name cocktails and confetti I thought that was such a fun like January bottle of soap <clears throat> loved that then I had these two floral ones that I've just finished up during spring. French lat, well, no, spring just started, but why am I nitpicking the details? I think this was February and this was like March. So if we really want to go there. Rose water and ivy was in February. Soft rose petals, rain kissed ivy, spring musk. This is a scent they usually have, but I love that packaging. And then French lavender with hints of amber. Classic, good, great. Another Bath & Body Works product that I used up is this. It's a room spray in the scent Frosted Cranberry. I actually kept this in my classroom. Um, I'm a teacher and so, oh that, yeah, the smell, I love scent memory. I love scent in general. But that smell reminds me of like uh, fall and winter mornings 
before the kids would get there I would spray all around. Uh, I definitely prefer like wax melts and candles in terms of how to fragrance your home even more so than diffusers and like room sprays but I enjoy scent in general so these are good, they're cute, they have like good seasonal ones, they're pretty cheap, I do recommend them. Frosted Cranberry was just okay, I wouldn't maybe repurchase that one but it was fine. Then I have a cleaning product, this is Mrs. Meyer's Clean Day great brand in general and then I love that this brand always comes out with like limited edition seasonal scents. I'm very into like seasonal things, changing things out with the seasons. It just, just makes life more fun, you know, especially a task like cleaning. So this was in the mum scent, so this was during the fall. Uh, I was not really familiar with a mum smell, but it's nice. It's like a nice floral, kind of soapy. I mean, it smells like a cleaning product, but yeah, I really love Mrs. Myers. Check out all of their stuff. Moving into hair, I have some shampoo and conditioner. Both of these are the Love, Beauty, and Planet, which is sold like a lot of places now I've seen. Uh, they are the Tea Tree Oil and Vetiver scent. They went together. Now I'm going to be very transparent here. I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of Tea Tree Oil, but the reason I had to get these was because <sighs> your girl here is a kindergarten teacher. I mentioned that, I mentioned that I'm a teacher. Um, one of the kids in my class, now watch, it's like that placebo effect where now I'm itchy, gave me lice. Uh, this was months ago. This was back in October. And so I did the lice treatment and we did the whole situation. Oh, also I don't think I've been on my channel since I've cut my hair. So yeah, I cut nine inches off my hair. That actually has nothing to do with the whole lice situation. I probably should have cut it back then. But anyway, I got rid of the lice, but it's like a known thing that lice really don't like tea tree oil. And so it's a good idea to use like tea tree shampoo. What I decided was that I just don't love these enough to like I don't know, I like to enjoy my beauty products, right? Clearly I'm a big fan of products. So I wanna be excited by the stuff that I'm using. Because these don't really excite me or any other like tea tree scent for that matter, I've decided that I'm just gonna do like a tea tree oil like treatment in my hair, maybe like once a month, just to like keep the, the kindergarten school lice at bay because it could very well come back at any time and I'm hoping not, but yeah, these are good. I just don't care for the scent that much. A few more hair products. This is a dry shampoo. Chlorine is the brand. And this was actually a dry shampoo for uh, dark hair. So my brunettes out there know that dry shampoo. It's already left, not really. Dry shampoo leaves a white cast and then it looks really awkward and weird. Kind of like you have weird gray spots or I don't know. So um, a lot of brands make ones that have like this kind of dye to it where it's brown. I've never been that into them though because I feel like the alternative to having white spots that you rub in is having like brown, like if you're gonna be in the rain or sweating for some reason, like you don't want that stuff to like kind of fall out of your hairline into your, I don't know. So I've never been a huge fan of them, but this one, the coloring in it was actually pretty good. It was pretty mild. Uh, I never really had problems with it like staining me or leaking down anywhere. The dry shampoo itself is good. I feel like I've been in like a weird place with dry shampoo where I almost feel like none of them are that good. I don't know. Like I know a lot of people use them just for volume. I don't. I use them to soak up oil and my hair doesn't even get that oily in general but I don't know, I just feel like I remember several years ago like being more impressed with dry shampoos in general. Oh, there's a siren, God bless. Hope everything's okay. But I feel like I find myself lately, like everyone that I go through, I'm like, eh, eh, it kind of worked. This one was pretty nice though. My friend Lauren actually brought this back for me from, I think Paris, cause that's like a French brand. So they sell it here though. This is a hair product that I have talked about before. It's the Not Your Mother's Beach Babe Texturizing Sea Salt Spray. This is a wave spray that I highly recommend. It's affordable, it smells really nice, and it works really well. Especially when I have really long hair, a go-to move of mine, if my hair was still damp, was to spray this wave spray, braid it, and then let it kind of air dry with it being like a little bit damp still, and this would help enhance like really pretty waves. Nothing like it didn't look like I did it with a curling iron or anything, but it would give me kind of a crimped, wavy, 
natural hair and um, yeah I really like this stuff I've repurchased it before several times I'm just testing out a few other wave sprays right now just kind of to mix it up but yeah I love this and then this is a hair product. This was actually a 100 point perk from Sephora and I was wildly impressed because it's 1.5 fluid ounces. A lot of the time the 100 point perks, not a lot of the time, but they can be just like dinky, you know, but this was not. This is the Diva Curl Melt Into Moisture Matcha Butter Conditioning Mask. If I'm being honest, I don't even think I had that big of an interest in this. It was more so just like, well, I guess I have to get it. It's such like a nice, good size sample. I or, or perk I'd be silly enough to get it I ended up really loving it it has a really nice smell it can be used as a like leave-in you know well not a leave-in like you would wash it out but like a deep conditioning mask or it can be used just as a conditioner depending on how long you leave it in your hair for but I really liked it and I actually want to get the full size it smells good it works well like yeah I love it moving into skincare I'm gonna briefly talk about a couple of uh, like sheet masks this one is called the dry hand rescue it uh, somebody gave this to me and on the back there's a sticker it's from world market but I'm I, I've seen dry hand cheap masks at other places and I assume that they would probably work similarly I really like this I was really impressed it was a little hard to sit with like my hands you know unable to be used but it really left them feeling soft and nice especially in the winter months and then this one is actually from Walmart of all places Travis had picked it up for me on kind of a whim it's the unicorn glow hologram mask so it seemed a little bit gimmicky and the mask itself was like a silvery tin you know holographic look to it it was to detox and brighten sheet masks you it's hard to tell did it magically do anything to you no probably not but did it smell nice feel nice did it seem to work like yeah it did and for being just like a Walmart like cheapy I liked it okay Shiseido facial cottons this was like a small pack I got at Ulta I really like these they're a little pricey for sh for facial cottons but I tear mine apart like it's hard to explain but it comes apart like that really easily so you can have like two halves and that helps me like la that helps them to last longer they're really soft I like them especially when you can get like a 20% discount or something they sell them at Ulta and Sephora so I actually have a ton of skincare in this batch of empties I don't really know how this video is going to be forever so yeah this is a really huge empties but anyway these are two alginist products first I have the overnight restorative cream with algaeronic acid and then at the same time uh oh at the same time that I was using that, I was using the uh, Firming and Lifting Neck Cream by Alginus. So both of these were in these nice, like, thick, glass, hefty jars. They're both two ounces. I picked these both up during one of the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sales. I think it was maybe a full year ago. Is that right? I don't know. It was one of them. And, um... I've been wanting to try Alginus a little bit more and get more familiar with the brand. I really liked both of these products, but I will say I don't think I liked them enough to ever pay full price for them. This guy, the neck cream, is like $100. And I can't tell if it's just because, like, knock on wood, I'm still too, like, young or whatever to really show signs of aging in my neck or, like... I don't know that it necessarily improved my neck, but I also don't know if my neck has that much to be improved yet. And if nothing else, I just use it for like a preventative measure, like every single night. So every day I put sunscreen all over my neck, like my decolletage, it's a very delicate area. But at night I would always do this cream. And um, so as much as now I have this placebo effect in my head where I can't not use a neck cream because I don't ever want to like, you know, I'm trying to prevent. I would not pay $100, just in general. I'm not trying to pay $100 for neck cream right now. I would be crazy enough to, or whatever. I, I don't think it's that crazy. I think a lot of you actually would pay like $100 for a face cream. And I think this one was close to 100. I got it for like 50 or like whatever half off was, maybe like 40 something. But in this case, it didn't knock me off my socks enough to justify paying it for a full price. Would I pick these up again if they were to come back on a 21 days of beauty sale yeah if I was in the market for a face cream and a neck cream but I wouldn't go out of my way to do it but yeah they're good like, they work talk about this all the time Garnier micellar cleansing water love it cheap works take off my makeup with it every day great this is by philosophy this is the purity made simple facial cleanser it's supposed to be a one-step facial cleanser I used this years ago and my mom still uses it 
like I used to use it a lot more religiously and then I got this bottle and I started to use it actually just as like a makeup remover so not like a with a cotton pad but I would use this in the shower like if I was to get in the shower right now with this face of makeup I would start with this so I don't know is that bad because it's supposed to be a one-step facial cleanser but I just felt like it wasn't enough to get rid of the makeup and cleanse my face I don't know if that's just like a mental thing because technically like it is supposed to do it all and I know a lot of people that use it just for that but for me I would use it like not a huge amount but a little bit like on my eyes you know get rid of my makeup and then I would go in with like a normal cleanser in the shower um it's gentle it's good it's like a, a tried and true it's just like a trusty one so I haven't repurchased it but I know that I like it yeah babe I went to start talking. what's up honey I go oh <laughs> okay babe so we need like five minutes I'll take the keys out to go five or like ten minutes ten minutes okay okay love you six twenty okay you heard the man I gotta get going to dinner but let's uh skincare out the wazoo okay another moisturizer I finished is this guy it's Clinique Moisture Surge there's two versions there's like an intense one and a regular this must be the regular it's a really lightweight gel formula I actually also got this at the Ulta sale I think it was like the most recent one aside from the one that's going on right now as I'm filming this but I don't know when I'm posting this okay moving on I love this. Clinique is an amazing brand. It's like such a classic, tried and true. This is a really nice, lightweight moisturizer, yet it packs a punch. It's super hydrating. I use it even like during the winter months and it worked well. I do tend to like a thicker cream during the winter and would probably prefer to use something like this during the summer, but it totally works. It doesn't irritate your skin. Like I would totally repurchase this. I really love it couple of Kiehl's products. Kiehl's is another one of my favorite skincare brands. So this is the Kiehl's Creamy Avocado Eye Treatment. Sorry if that's not focusing. This is like a cult classic eye cream. It has a really unique texture. It's like balmy and you have to like warm it up in your hands essentially before you apply it. It's super interesting. Um, this is like at least my second jar. I think it might only be my second jar. And honestly, I think... As of now, this is my favorite eye cream ever. Um, there's also a really expensive La Mer one that I had sampled that I remember really liking, but I haven't like played with it enough to fully decide. And I'm not just trying to like shell out $200 or whatever, just like uh, haphazardly, like without really careful thought and like whatever. But this is just good. It's so hydrating on your under eye. Like part of me like doesn't believe that anything can actually like reverse the signs of aging I mean stuff definitely helps and like works and like preventing is what you're supposed to try to do and all that but I don't know I just feel like I don't know without like surgery I don't know how easy it is to really reverse things but this hydrates it's great I recommend it speaking of hydration this is the Kiehl's hydro plumping retexturizing serum concentrate this is like a gel serum that just gives your skin like a boost of hydration you can use it as a serum or like an addition to serum you can definitely use it like morning night before moisturizer like it there's no scent no frill any skin type could use this I use it um, not every day I alternate between this and like another product that I just go back and forth like during the day I really love it and that's my second one I think or that's my first one and I have my second one in my uh, cabinet right now here's another skincare product that I have used several times this is the Sunday Riley Luna nighttime sleeping oil with retinol and blue tansy I was always a huge fan of Sunday Riley like Clinique uh, Kiehl's and Sunday Riley were actually my top three skincare brands it was like all I used then there was kind of like a controversy that came out about Sunday Riley and I don't know and I also just kind of out of interest want to start exploring other things and sometimes I also think your skin gets like used to something and then it's not a bad idea to like try something else so for those following like factors I have not yet repurchased this it's definitely one where I know that it works like it is one where I would put it on at night and I could see a difference in the morning like that's how well it would work um if I had any like breakouts or spots or just like ugh, like ickiness that would be gone or on its way out by morning like it would just look better in the morning I would be glowy fresh 
all that. I think it's great. So again, it's a product that like I have it in my back pocket in terms of like, I need to get a retinol product, I'm gonna get that one. But I'm definitely trying to explore other ones. It's also like not cheap. So again, I'm not trying to just be like, tomato, tomato, like let me go get the Sunday Riley. Like, although skincare is something you should invest in, or like in my opinion, it's worth spending more money on. Okay, this is by Saturday Skin, which is a skincare brand that I've recently gotten into. This is the Featherweight Daily Moisturizing Cream. I really liked this. I really like this brand. It's not too expensive. It's all really good, really cute packaging. Like no irritation, like perfect daytime moisturizer. Also worked for night though. Like I loved it. Bosha Charcoal Pore Pudding Mask. This was the mask where you can see it's like swirls of black and white. It was meant to kind of tighten your pores, balance out your skin. It has like a really interesting smell. It was a lot of fun to apply. Like it would be like weird swirly colors and then it would turn gray. I think it worked well. This was just like a sample size. Um, but yeah, I quite enjoyed it. Not enough to like go out and buy it, but I liked it. It was fun while well, I had it. A couple of lip products. The first one is by Lush. This is a honey scented lip scrub. This is actually not empty, but it expired before I could use it all. Lush is an amazing brand. It's all like natural handmade stuff and I love the lip scrub. It smells good. It tastes good. It works well. So recommend. They have other flavors as well. This is a lip balm that I highly recommend. It's by Jack Black. Jack Black has a lot of lip balms like in tubes, or I guess this is technically a tube, but they have lip balms that are like, um, like this. This is a Kiehl's one, okay, where it's kind of like liquidy. This is actually just like a balm version and I much prefer this. This would glide on like butter like butter 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 and it would just oh like I loved this I need to get more of this this is in the mint scent I think that's the only one that this stick comes in I actually bought this for Travis originally but then like I think he forgot about it in like the back of his medicine cabinet and I swiped it it's really good I want to talk about Lancer for a second these were some deluxe size products that came with a full-size Lancer product I got at Nordstrom a while ago Lancer is a skincare brand that I've recently fallen in love with that I'm like rolling my eyes about because it's not cheap and I don't want to be in love with it but I am so this is the method cleanse which is a cleanser the method nourish which is a moisturizer and the omega hydrating oil which is a facial oil I've used this twice now like two sample sizes like this it's an amazing facial oil so hydrating so nice like I really love it okay then okay I'm like Ugh. and then the cleanser and then the nourish the the moisturizer these were so good like fragrance free non irritating like hydrating like they were just good but they're not cheap like the full size I want to say is like I don't know it's like $50 for a cleanser like maybe even more I think it's more I think it's like 60 or 70 for a cleanser like that's aggressive you know what I mean but like I don't know sometimes they do like sample sets like they sell Lancer on Sephora too and if they do like a kit it might be worth it I really like it here I have some body products two body butters this is the Kiehl's creme de corps whipped body butter with soy milk and honey love this stuff has an amazing smell it's like this lightweight delicious like hydrating cream I really liked it I like the creme de corps lotion better if I had to just choose one I would just choose the plain unscented lotion but this was like a nice treat and then I had this guy this is a Jo Malone body cream creme Travis got this for me uh like a couple Christmases ago this was in the scent English Pear and Freesia Jo Malone is one of my favorite brands it's so pretty and this is just so nice it's a nice glass jar really like well fragranced and like luxurious I will say I kind of got sick of the scent English Pear and Freesia is one I, I also have the bottle of perfume and I wish I wouldn't have gotten the big size of it because I'm kind of over it um I don't know why there's something about it that just makes me a little sickly now, but like I love the Jo Malone brand formula of this everything. These are two body scrubs I went through during like the winter. This one is by Bath and Body Works. It is the Funfetti Body Scrub in Vanilla Bean Noel. I talked about this in a video entitled worth the hype or worth the products worth mentioning because I'm like so obsessed with this. I have like a million backups. It's so amazing. Vanilla Bean Noel is the most delicious vanilla smell of all time. They sell it every year during uh, like Christmas time. And this Funfetti body scrub quite literally smells like Funfetti frosting 
love it. I actually have another one of these in my shower right now, even though it's April. Okay, Philosophy Snow Angel. I shouldn't have just said April because, again, who knows when I'll be posting this, but oh well. Philosophy Snow Angel. This was in my stocking during Christmas. It is sweetly fallen snow. Travis is coming in to tell me that we have to go. But I'm not done. And cut. Okay, come on. We really do gotta go. <sighs> Look at my Freddie Mercury pin. I'll be back in a little while. All right, where did we leave off? Uh, I'm home from dinner now. The lighting's probably different. Few more products to discuss. Okay, these are both products that are not entirely empty, but I got rid of them for being like expired and or just not liking them. Um, this is a lip balm. This is by the brand Tokyo Milk, which I first discovered on Birchbox. And this is just like their regular Bon Bon lip balm in the scent called Cherry Balm. Yeah, Cherry Balm. I actually really like this. This is almost gone. Um, I used a good amount of it, but then it went bad. I really like these lip balms. I also had one in the scent called Rose Water a while ago. And then I think they also made one called Let Them Eat Cake. So like really fun scents. The packaging, like the box packaging was like super precious. I've never really seen these in store, but they sold them on Birchbox and like I would rebuy it. It was super cute. This though was actually also something from Birchbox. This is some random brand that I don't know if I know. Oh, the brand, oh, sorry, that was my phone vibrating. The brand actually is the name of the product, so it's Hustle Butter, and it's this magnificent multi-purpose cream, and it's all natural. This was something that I had gotten in a birch box as a sample, and then I placed an order for it. Um, I like the name of it, Hustle Butter. It's like a multi-purpose balm. You know, in theory, you can use it on, like, your your knees and elbows, um, your cuticles. I, it kind of seemed like it was something you could use all over or like a hand cream like it seemed a little bit more multi-purpose than it ended up being and my biggest gripe with this honestly even for those places that I mentioned is it's like super like super greasy and so I hate when like hand products don't sink into your skin because I just do I want to put them on I want them to work hydrate and then like be done with it this just felt like I had rubbed my hands on like Crisco or something so like it smelled nice but I just like wasn't into it I kept it in the downstairs guest bathroom and would use it on my hands after I would go to the bathroom down there sometimes but I think it's expired anyway I've used like around half maybe a little more and I'm just ah, getting rid of it Another hand cream that I did like a little better is this guy. It's by Lanolin, and it is the Rose Hand Cream. I feel like I talked about the other one of this in my last empties video. This came in a two-pack. I got it from Nordstrom. There was Rose and then Lemon Scented. Honestly, I bought them because they were really cute little packages. This is pink, and the other one was yellow. They were on sale. It smelled nice. It was fine, but I wouldn't necessarily repurchase or go out of my way to repurchase if it was on full price especially just because the texture was a little weird again with hand creams I'm all about the texture and this one stayed kind of like um almost felt waxy on my hands like it wasn't greasy but it did leave kind of a weird residue a little bit uh, I prefer this one to the hustle butter I used this all the way up but that's just my two cents on that this is a deodorant I use this all the time the Donna Karen cashmere mist it's such an amazing deodorant. Like, it smells so good. It feels so luxurious. It is expensive, but typically it goes on sale during the Nordstrom anniversary sale, and to me, it's super worth it. I will say, though, that now that natural deodorant is, like, being even more and more and more talked about, like, I am getting a little more nervous about using this and, like, thinking more about um, fully diving into, like, the natural route but I haven't bitten the bullet just yet. Actually, my other one is right here that I ha have been using and it's like just about to run out. And I, do I even have an extra one? I think I do. I want to say I have one more. Usually I have enough to last me through the year until the next Nordstrom anniversary sale. So we'll see, but yeah, for sure getting rid of this one might have a couple uses left on that, but I do recommend it aside from the whole like non-natural aspect. This is a shower gel by Kiehl's. It's the Bath and Shower Liquid Body Cleanser in Lavender. This was fine. It smelled like lavender. It was a good cleanser. Like it lathered okay. 
I would not necessarily repurchase it though because the packaging's super like boring. Like there's nothing that exciting or amazing about it. And Kiehl's isn't exactly like drugstore or cheap. So it was good. I like Kiehl's, but I mean, I like other, like Bath and Body Works shower gels are amazing. So many fun smells and they're cheaper, you know. My last category is makeup, which I have not a ton of, but like a decent amount. I have a couple of mascaras. I actually have a primer and then a mascara. So this is the Laura Geller Fortifying Lashes Eyelash Primer. It was an all black mascara primer, which I've only ever used white primers. It had this like curvy wand, kind of a thick bristly brush. I quite liked this. I like that it was black. I think uh, white ones don't bother me, but it was just nice that it was like double coat of black and there was no white showing through. It definitely helped to lengthen and volumize my lashes. It got pretty icky though, like pretty messy and kind of goopy, which that's a slight turn off. I want to say I got this for free in a birch box. Yeah, and it was full size, so I didn't pay for it, but I like Laura Geller as a brand. I don't know if I would repurchase it, though, just because I've recently discovered the L'Oreal, well, here, I'll show you, the L'Oreal Lash Paradise Primer that's drugstore, and it's cheaper, and it smells like roses, and I love it, and it works really well. So because this one's cheaper, I probably wouldn't like buy this, but it was good. Then the mascara I was using with it is the Lancome Hypnose Drama. This is like a cult classic mascara. Lancome is known for making really good mascaras. Number one, I like the way they smell, which is strange because mascara, like, I don't know, but they smell good. Uh, really volumizing, lengthening. Like, I love Lancome mascaras. They are quite expensive, but they oftentimes go on sale during, like, Ulta 21 Days of Beauty. That's typically a good place to pick them up. That's when I got this. I would not want to pay the $30 or whatever it is for at full price, but I wouldn't never do that. I might do that. Like, I know it's good, so... It's not not worth it, it's just hard for me to do it when I know that I can get it for cheaper sometimes, you know? Okay, a few concealers. This is the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. Everybody knows this. Shade Light. It's great. I do feel like some of the hype and obsession over this has worn down a little bit just because so many other brands have come out with really good concealers. I haven't necessarily tested too many other ones. Uh, I do currently have the Too Faced Born This Way which I quite like and the common thing people say is that it has roughly just as good of coverage but slightly more hydrating. I do run fairly dry so this can be a bit drying but honestly not even really. Like, I still love this. This is still kind of my ride or die. It self-sets, essentially. High coverage, creamy, blendable. Not really buildable, but it's full coverage, so you don't really need to build it up. Like, I wear this every day, and I don't wear, like, foundation or anything, typically. So I love it. I recommend it. But I am, like, open to trying other ones. And then another concealer that I got, this was also from the last time train. Ulta did 21 Days of Beauty. I'm finding a trend here. I love Ulta in general and Ulta 21 Days of Beauty. Like, Okay, so this is the Ulta brand full coverage liquid concealer. I want to say this is normally a um, nice little doe foot applicator. I think it's like seven or nine. Nine dollars, I think. So it's cheap, but during that sale it was like four dollars. So I actually have picked up another one during the current sale that's going on. It's a really nice like easy peasy good concealer it's um full coverage it's blendable i mean i would say it's slightly less creamy and blendable than like the tart maybe slightly less full coverage than the shape than the tart shape tape but other than that especially for the price point like it definitely was good i quite enjoyed it and there's a pretty good shade range i believe don't quote me but i think that's the case another product this is by urban decay it's the vitamin b6 vitamin infused complexion prep spray urban decay is pretty well known for their makeup setting sprays like their all-nighter is a bestseller so this is kind of along those lines except it's meant to be a prep spray. I guess theoretically any face spray you can spray before, during, and after your makeup application. You know what I'm saying? This is not meant to set anything. It truly is just meant to like hydrate and give your face some some vitamins and some preparation. When I use it as a prep spray, I mean sure it would give me a little bit of luminosity and hydration that would help. 
uh, as I applied my makeup, but I don't think it necessarily helped with longevity or melding together some of like the powders or, or cakiness if, if you know your makeup got cakey. I sometimes would spray it on after too. Like all in all, I would say that I wouldn't buy it just because like I wouldn't repurchase it. This was a small one just because I don't think it really did much slash it didn't do anything different than some other products that I already just really like like a MAC Fix Plus or just like the Urban Decay All Nighter or I mean there's just like other facial sprays like the um, Saturday Skin Daily Dew if I just want like a hydrating mist that one to me is way better in terms of a prep spray or a finishing spray like this is good it's fine but there's just stuff that I like better you know what I mean couple of lip products. This guy was from NYX. It's kind of old and dingy now. It was the matte lipstick in the shade called Tea Rose. I think I have a little bit left, but I really did wear it down to the bone. It's a gorgeous matte mauve pink. I actually really liked this lipstick. Super affordable, like the most gorgeous color, gorgeous formula. It doesn't really smell like anything. I love NYX. It's probably, well, it's one of my favorite drugstore brands. If I want to be like really pretentious about it or like I don't even know if that's the right word I mean the packaging is like not that cute it rubs off like you definitely get what you pay for a lot of the time in terms of like cheapy drugstore packaging versus like a gorgeous Charlotte Tilbury gold packaging on the lipstick and sometimes it's just fun to have like that pretty item that also is a good lipstick but in terms of the formula it's great and speaking of expensive lipsticks with good packaging, here I have a little Tom Ford one. Now I did not pay for this. This was like a sample or something with a Sephora order, but I'm actually getting rid of this because it's like not empty. This is in the shade called Indian Rose and it is a pretty color. It's like a little bit more peachy than that NYX one but speaking of like the formula being good the formula is not that good like the packaging is beautiful especially if it was a full size one it smells nice but my problem with this is that it was just not long lasting enough I get it that sometimes a more creamy formula is gonna like glide off or come off a little bit easier but I still just felt like I don't know I just was so unimpressed and even though I got it for free like I wasn't gonna keep this just because it's pretty and it's Tom Ford because the formula is just not that good it would rub off I would have to reapply constantly but it would still kind of like it would wear away but it would still kind of feel like some was on there so then I just felt like I was building it up and it was a little uncomfortable maybe that's just a personal preference because Tom Ford is not the only one there are other lipstick formulas where I don't like the way I like to like feel like it's on there like this is a ColourPop one and it's a creme or cream formula and I can feel that it's on there it's not bothering me but I can feel it I like to know that like okay my products on it's good you know what I mean this I would be like is it there it's fading it's weird like I don't know and for Tom Ford like no thank you last but not least I have this eyeliner by Marc Jacobs I want to say this was like a birthday gift from Sephora a year or two ago I don't even know what it was point perk something I know I didn't pay for it this is the Marc Jacobs highliner gel crayon liner this is the black one so here's what I'll say about these Marc Jacobs liners they are awesome they have an awesome formula and if you're the type of person that uses like liners like this oh see and it twists up yeah really black really nice if you're the type of person that uses pencil eyeliners all the time I do really recommend these they have a lot of fun colors and if you're the type of person who's going to use those like on the waterline or lower lash line or whatever like they're great but I don't wear eyeliner every day I mean I'm not today and sometimes I wear I mean I probably just have too much makeup maybe that's my issue but sometimes I'm doing like a wing and I don't use this for that right so I'll use a liquid or something and Long story short, it just dried out before I could finish using it. And because I know this is an expensive liner when you buy it full price, like I don't think I could pay for it. I would be happy to have these uh, in black or in other colors just because I know they're good. I like the packaging, I like the formula. But again, for the price point, I couldn't pay for those knowing that I don't go through eyeliner that fast. 
Plus, I just recently discovered um, a really good eyeliner formula. It is the Laura Geller um, Incre Incredible Gel Eyeliner. That's really awesome packaging, awesome formula. I haven't had them for too long, so I don't know how long it takes till they dry out. Knock on fake wood, they'll last. But yeah, I couldn't justify buying the Marc Jacobs one unless you use liner like every single day, you know? So that is it. That was a huge batch of empties. I already have stuff starting to pile up for my next round of empties. I just didn't want to include it because this is already excessive. So thank you for watching. Arigato. I'm pretty sure that means thank you in Japanese. I'll see you next time. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns down below. If you liked this video, a thumbs up and or a subscribe would be appreciated. And I'll see you next time. Love you. Bye.